the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God. Amen. This morning, dear brothers and sisters in Christ, we have entered, as of a little bit earlier this morning, officially into the season of autumn. We are officially in the season of autumn, of fall. And it was a beautiful sight, kind of driving through. It, it was kind of um, um, murky outside, uh, foggy, uh, but you could see the trees on either side of the highway. And there were some of those trees, not many yet, but some of them, very few, had, have already started turning to a stunning, beautiful red and orange and yellowish color. And that was such a treat uh, to see, just to see the glory of God's creation and how we even read in scripture how God has set all the seasons in order for us to be able to experience and, and enjoy. And this morning, with the beginning of autumn, we also have the beginning of a new series of readings within the liturgical cycle of the church. We start the Gospel of Luke. Actually, the Gospel of Luke started earlier this week, but this is the first Sunday of Luke. And if you recall, when we started after Easter, after Pentecost, the first cycle, uh, when we started the cycle of Matthew, the very first reading is about how Jesus gathers his disciples. And that's what we hear today in this first Sunday of Luke, how Jesus gathers his disciples. And there's a, a interesting kind of uh, interaction here that we see with our Lord. So Jesus wants to teach the people, but he has something else in mind. He wants to teach the people, but he also wants to gather his disciples. So what does he do? He sees these hardworking fishermen, James and John, and Peter and Andrew, the two sets of brothers. And they were there cleaning up their nets, getting ready for another haul of fish. And so Jesus kind of approaches um, one of the brothers, one of the set of brothers, and he says, pull out. Um, because I, there are a lot of people that were gathered already, a lot of people, of course, who were curious to know who Jesus was, and they wanted to hear Jesus' words, his message. So in order to do that, practically, Jesus says, put out a little bit so that I can teach the people from... Um, from the boat. It, it's kind of interesting too because it almost sounds as if, you know, going to a, a rock concert. You know, you've got the stage there and, you know, there's a little bit of a distance between the audience and the, and the performers, right? And so maybe Jesus had this in mind. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. Uh, but the fact is that Jesus here wants to address the people. So he does. But he says this because the fishermen could have said, who are you? They knew who he was. They knew that he was a, a very popular uh, rabbi, teacher. That's all they knew about him. And they knew that he was from Nazareth. So they had a sense of who Jesus already was. Uh, and so they could have easily said, no, 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 we don't have time. We're really busy. You know, uh, why don't you send the people to the synagogue so they can hear the other rabbis talk? You know, we're really busy right now, Jesus. But they don't say that. They pull out. Jesus teaches the people. That was the first test for the disciples. Then, after he's done teaching, he turns to the disciples, and then he says, I want you now to pull out a little farther into the water. In other words, I want you to go out into the deep, because I want you to go and catch fish. Now, he knew that they didn't catch any fish, that it was a kind of a hard night the night before. And Peter says, but you know, we didn't catch anything. But since you said it, we will go and cast our nets. And so they do that. Now, it could be, it could be that what Peter and Andrew and James and John and all the people who were gathered there, maybe they understood that what Jesus' message was. They enjoyed his message. They liked his message. Somehow it sunk into them. It meant something to them. And maybe that inspired them to take that extra step that they perhaps needed. 
to believe him to be the Son of God. That is why Peter says, because he's battling in his mind, but you know, we didn't do well, but I'm going to go out. We'll, we'll go out anyway. Maybe something inspired him in Jesus' sermon, in his homily. So that's what happens. And then they have such a haul of fish, the gospel tells us, that the boat began to sink. I mean, those boats, you know, there were wooden boats, certainly. But can you imagine how much fish, the weight of that, of those fish being exerted on the boat that it started to make it to tip over? I mean, there's more weight in the fish than there are bodies on, on, on the ship, human bodies on the ship. And then they had to call over their, the, uh, their other colleagues from the other boat to help them to bring the, the net in because, you know, the net wasn't going to tear and it didn't tear, but the boat was being tipped over. They're in astonishment because nothing, they caught nothing, nothing. Not even a little tug from the night before. And now all of a sudden, all of these fish, the fish that came to them was because Christ called the fish to him. It was an act of God to see now if they would believe. And what does, uh, what does Peter say? He looks at Jesus and he's astonished and he says, this man can only be from God. This man is very different from these other teachers we have in our synagogues. He's far superior to anything I've ever seen or heard. And so he says, Lord, depart from me. I don't deserve such, such blessings. I am a sinful man. Depart from me. Leave me. I'm not worthy. Jesus' response is, do not be afraid. Do not be afraid of who you were. Do not be afraid of who you are. And do not be afraid of what you will become. Because he says... And he doesn't, Jesus doesn't say, from now, you know, I want you to consider becoming a fisherman. He doesn't say that. He says, from now, you will catch uh, men in the nets of the church. He doesn't say, you may want to consider it. He says, you will catch men. End of story. This is the commission. And this is, brothers and sisters, what Christ tells us. What does he tell us every day of our lives? Do not be afraid of who you were, of who you are, and of what you will become. Christ, when he sees our faith, because if Peter hadn't gone out first, a little bit out to the water for Jesus to teach and then further out into the deep for them to fish, Jesus wouldn't have acted. But he acts based on that faith. He sees their faith, but he sees the faith is not perfect. It's not complete. Seems to me that that's where pretty much all of us are. But he says, when we see these great acts of miracles that happen around us, when all of us have experienced miracles in our lives, there's not, there's not anyone here who has not had a miracle of some sort happen in his life. Depends upon what we mean by miracle, too. If we consider all of life a miracle, then miracles happen constantly every single day of our lives. If we mean something supernatural, something that doesn't follow the laws of science or logic, we've all had those experiences, I know that as well. So what is Jesus saying? He's saying that your faith, I am here to perfect your faith. I am here to help you become the best that you can be. You will catch men from now on. He's going to take our trade, whatever it is that we're good at, catching fish, being an attorney, being a teacher, whatever it is, and he's going to transform that into something far greater than we could ever have imagined. And he says, from now on, you will not be teaching children.
From now on, you will be teaching the world. From now on, you won't be treating people with heart conditions. From now, you will be treating all people in whatever psychological state they may be in. This challenge comes to us daily, every single day and moment of our lives. And even in these miracles that occur, what is our reaction? Oh, this can't be happening to me. Who am I? And Jesus says, no, don't be afraid. Who are you? You are the most important person to me. He says that to every single one of us in this congregation. Into, he says this to every single human being on the face of this earth. You are the most important person to me because I am going to have you take you and use you to do the miracles that need to be done. You are my ambassador. He says this to everyone. If we don't believe in that, then it won't happen. But if we believe, at least in an ounce of our own goodness, and that, you know, is the problem ultimately in, in life. I'll tell you, you know, you're going to say, I'm going to make an existential statement, and I'm going on record and I'm going to say it. The absolute fundamental problem today, whether you look at politics, whether you look at religion, is one thing and one thing only. And that's because people don't see the goodness either in themselves or in each other. Because if we saw that goodness in ourselves, we would respect ourselves. And if we saw that goodness in others, we would respect the others. But we don't. Because we don't think with the, with the mind of God. We think with the mind, with the pea brain of human beings. Who don't see the full picture like God does. And that is what God is calling us, brothers and sisters, to do. To not be afraid. To believe in ourselves as we believe in God. To believe in our fellow woman and man as God believes in us. And then to go out and to catch men to do the will of God. God has a lot of trust in us. An amazing amount of trust in us. Why is it that we don't have enough trust in ourselves and in one another? So... In closing, as we celebrate this first Sunday of fall, this first Sunday of Luke, we are challenged by God. We are challenged to not be afraid of our past, of our present, and of the future. We are challenged and encouraged to believe, to go beyond the limits as Peter went beyond the limits of pulling out at sea and then to, when we see the miracles not to say I'm afraid Lord leave me I don't deserve this goodness but to say Lord if it is your will which it is let me be part of your plan let me be part of your agenda let me be that person who will make this world a better place to live in. This is the challenge. May we meet the challenge, and may we encourage one another to meet this challenge and to do great things in our world.